Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. May you operate in a mighty way in the hearts of some people when they see what the Word of God says. In Jesus' name, Amen. Video 1, Today's People of God. Peter tells us who these people are. It's not a national race of a nation of this world. Peter addresses in his epistles the elect believers who settled around Asia Minor. And I'm using the Eastern Greek Orthodox New Testament and the Source New Testament. The Source New Testament tells us because of the foreknowledge of God, they were chosen by advance and sanctified in the Spirit. Or, it can be said like this, such as are in the Spirit of the Anointed One, in the Spirit of Christ, not the Holy Ghost, and who are sprinkled with His blood. Those are the chosen people of God. No other is a chosen people of God. So you can see it has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ and with the fact that those believers are elect. They have been chosen and that they are in the Spirit of Christ and that they are sprinkled with his blood. Those are the people of God today. They are in some lands, not all lands. They are not in Israel. Nobody in Israel is like what has been described, not one person, not even a person who says he's a Christian. Because if they were a Christian, they wouldn't be leaving there, they'd leave. And can we say about them, about the people of God, are they such as leads to your praying attention to Jesus, the Anointed One, and the sprinkling of His blood? Regarding Israel of the Old Testament, they stumbled and were all disobedient. The Eastern Orthodox Greek New Testament says, which is what they were, disobedient, and they were laid aside. But we are a chosen race of the elect. So Israel of the Old Testament was laid aside, finished. So anybody who thinks that the Israel of today has anything to do with the Old Testament, they are disregarding the scriptures which say that they were laid aside. Now we have preached this in various forms before. Peter goes on to say, these chosen people are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that they may proclaim the wonderful deeds of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. The people of God will be doing that. How many churches are taking a stand like this? Personally, I don't know any. How many Christians are taking a stand like this? Hardly any. But this is what the Word of God declares. The people of God are proclaiming the wonders and the deeds of salvation that has brought them out of sin and darkness. And they are proclaiming the fact that the Israel of the Old Testament was laid aside. How many churches are doing that? Another version says, 
their assigned, saved race, acquired by God, to proclaim the wonders of him who called you out of darkness into amazing light. Which people are doing that? Certainly not natural Israel. They have not been called out of darkness into his most marvelous light. If you have been called out of darkness into his most marvelous light, you will be proclaiming it and you will be saying, this is who the people of God are. There's only one kind of people, not two, before God. And they are a spiritual house who offer up spiritual sacrifices as spiritual priests, as royal priests, as heavenly minded unto God. They have nothing to do with an idea of the third temple being built. That is sacrilege to the blood of Jesus Christ. That is to despise the blood of Jesus Christ. That is to tread on the blood of Jesus Christ. If you are proclaiming a third temple to be built, you are treading on the blood of Jesus Christ and there is no salvation for you. You're not saved. You don't belong to Jesus. You're not in the people of God. And incidentally, the only people of God today come from the Gentiles because there are no Hebrews left. The people who are there in Israel are not Hebrews. They are not descendants of Abraham as they say themselves. As Netanyahu's there. As one of their... Uh, uh, General Sons goes round America saying, they know they're not the people of God. They know they're not descended from Abraham. So the people of God are not of earth. They are heavenly people. Now there are some believers in Christ Jesus who are the people of God. No others. Never those in Israel. They are not the people of God. The wonders and the deeds of salvation that has brought them out of sin and darkness and they are proclaiming the fact that the Israel of the Old Testament was laid aside. I just exhilarated, put it that way, at what they're reading and seeing on the videos. And they're sending replies that are outstanding. There are two, another person has bought source. She is a lover of the word. And uh, I want to share this letter with you. This is from the Dutch lady, who's the only person in the whole of Holland who didn't love Netanyahu, that I know of. I think she thinks she is the only one and I think she probably is. She has had this translated somehow or other into English from Dutch. You think she grew up English speaking, but it's not her. She writes to all of us, dear family, from Irene, I hear that you regularly pray for me. I'm very dear to you for that. It gives a nice feeling that there are people who regularly pray for me. Recently I was thinking about how I had come to the Irene site. The only thing I can think of is that su I suddenly saw the old face of Irene and that she had been in the ministry for 65 years. That interested me. And I love to listen to old people who always remain young in the spirit. And oh, how I would like to come to you to be in your services. But this is not possible. When the Lord does a miracle, who knows? Our king is a king full of surprises. There's always people wanting to come here. <laughs> Every morning, 
when I have breakfast, I immediately listen to a short message from you. I call that breakfast with Irene. I wish there were a few people having breakfast with Irene and listening to the videos. Once again, I want to thank you for all your prayers and I pray that the Lord will bless you very deeply and that the municipality, whatever that is, can grow. Peter, I have an, another encouragement for you. Your attempt to translate aunt and uncle well, that was almost entirely good. I don't know how you didn't do correctly, Peter. I, even I would have known. It was Tanta Irene and Um Peter. Uh, we, I mean, we say in English, Om. Um. Oh, yeah. Go through brother like that and you can become a missionary to our kidding. Our country, just kidding. I wish you all a very good weekend. Lots of blessing in the service. I think it is not possible to follow this service, but maybe the sermon comes up on video. Once again, I wish you a lot of blessing and that you can grow a church. This is what she says. We are a church. The message that Irene brings must be given. The world must know. With many kind regards and connected in Christ, so I, I had to read that to you because she wrote it to you. And also, I had a, uh, I think I might have told you this, from the Talmudic country of Switzerland, a certain brother there, and uh, he asked for prayer. And I immediately said, well, we were led to pray for you, brother, one by one, last Sunday, I think it was. He immediately said a thank you. He thought it was wonderful that we had all prayed for him before he even asked for prayer. So that's wonderful. And people appreciate that you pray for them. And uh, uh, we will do more and more of it and I'll tell them that you are praying because they love to think that they belong here. Because they don't belong anywhere this brother in Switzerland, all alone. And even uh, Carolina, even though she goes to a church, is all alone. She, she tells them about Israel, how wrong it is. And one person said, because you don't love those people of God, I can have nothing to do with you ever again. <laughs> well, that's so much for that.